Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and are a regular subscriber. My name is Carla, I am the Stitchy Witch in Scotland and today is October the 22nd and I'm here to do a little bit of an update on my works in progress, on what it is I've been stitching on in the last couple of weeks. Uh, when I say last couple of weeks, it's actually not true because last week I was away visiting friends and family so I didn't get any stitching done. I decided that I wanted to just have a complete break for a week because I knew that I would be travelling and that I would be mostly in the company of people and I think it would be sort of quite rude just to whip out some project and, you know, not really put all my attention into the whole purpose that I was there was to spend time with people but I did actually take a crochet project with me and even that didn't really get much of a look in so most of my stitching that I'll show you is what has been done between my last video which was a couple of weeks ago where I did um, I think I did an update a progress update and so I'm just going to show you actually not very much because I'm in my last video I said that I was going to whip down I think this is kind of a new term for me but something I've heard people saying on floss tube that they actually want to get some of their whips you know some good progress on their whips so that they've chosen certain ones to do for a certain period of time and I know that I always work better when I um, just pick out two or three then if I try to do a rotation of like 9 or 10 or 15 I find that I just get too overwhelmed with that it never really works for my character so I like to just you know pick a few that I can just get progress on and um, for me it's more about getting progress I was watching I think it's um, Kim Hollenbach's channel I'll link her channel below because I can't remember exactly what the name of the channel is and she does some wonderful videos and she gives you some great tips about how to manage your, you know, um, how to manage your routine and stuff. Just going by what she does, she comes up with some great ideas. And she was saying that she's a progress stitcher and that's a new term for me. And I was thinking, yeah, I think I'm also a progress stitcher. Not so much a process stitcher because I, can't, I do enjoy the actual stitching part, but I think more than that, I like to see progress. So the only way to do that is to actually keep on working on the same thing consistently. And it doesn't mean that you can't do anything else, it just except the one project or two projects. It just means that maybe you want to keep one in the picture or two in the picture that you work on as a focus so that you always get the progress. Um, anyway, I'm always all over the place with my uh, rotations. I, I change my mind like the weather. So... <laughs> I'm not the best person to take advice about rotations. In fact, sometimes I go onto Floss Tube just to find out what other people are doing to see if I can, I don't know, maybe get some tips from them or be influenced by them. Um, today's going to be one of those horrible hair days. Unfortunately, the weather's a little bit, it doesn't look too bad. The sun has come out, but it's getting colder. And we just started putting the heating on recently. I went away last week to the Mediterranean and it's I was I didn't know whether to take sandals or boots or what have you because some people said it's going to rain other people said oh it's really too warm um, I ended up taking everything just in case and it ended up being yeah just too warm compared to Scotland because Scotland's a cold country right but um, it was just a bit of a confusion about what to take. <laughs> I took a coat and never needed it at all. Not even once did I need to put a coat on. I was walking around in a cardigan for most of the trip. Um, but then as soon as I got to Scotland, it actually was strangely warm when I got back to Scotland, which I hadn't expected at all. And people were saying it's like 14 degrees at midnight. We arrived about one o'clock in the morning. I expect they were like looking in our cases for our coats because we thought we're going to freeze. Came out of the airport and it was just like I was wearing a cardigan. And I was like it's not cold at all which is very strange for Scotland coming to the end of October. But yeah stranger things have happened right. Anyway enough about weather and talk. What I want to show you today is a few things and first of all I want to just give you a little rundown of my whips. I'm not sure if you would prefer me to do like a shorter video with updates maybe a couple of times a month or 
even once a week update or whether you would just like one big long update. Let me know if you have any preference. If you don't have any preference, that's absolutely fine. I'm sure I'll work it out somehow. Um, so the first one I want to show you is the new one which I started not long ago. I always say not long ago because I can't remember the exact date, <laughs> but it really wasn't long ago. Um, I think it was in September or coming to the end of September and it's called Once Upon a Fairy Tale by Jenna Della Grottaglia and I started this with a couple of ladies, Craft Addict, I will put a link to her channel below. She started a while back I think and she's got some really good progress and I also started this with uh, Lydia's Leisurely Stitching. If I've made a mess of that, sorry, I get tend to get channel names a little bit jumbled backwards sometimes but Lydia's channel is also linked below so you can take a look she has raced on way ahead of me which I knew was going to happen because I'm sort of trying got other sort of focus pieces at the moment which I'll talk about in a moment but I did manage to get quite a good amount of progress done on this one compared to the last video and the last time I showed it to you and I'm working this one for the first time in my life I decided to choose to do 28 count because I just fancied having a slightly smaller end result than a big huge one. So this is my progress today of this one. Bring it in a little closer for you to see. And you can see that I've managed to get half of this page done already and the colours that are coming out are absolutely lovely. I didn't expect such beautiful colours to pop up. These gorgeous oranges that are beginning to show here. I might have to put a, another picture up for you to see. So it doesn't look like there's a huge amount to show, but they'll tell you there's a huge amount of work gone into this. Because the stitches are smaller, it does feel like you have to try a little bit harder to get more, more done. By that I mean if this was all done in 25 count it would be slightly larger on the fabric because the stitches are bigger but because the stitches are smaller you have to do more to get the same amount that you can see visually I don't know if I've explained that well but um, the page would be slightly bigger if it had been 25 count basically so everything you do is just like miniature <laughs> <laughs> and some people said to me, how on earth can you stitch on this fabric? And I said, well, you know what? In our community, it isn't even that small because we've got our 32 count stitches, 40 count stitches, all that type of thing. And, you know, I just kind of leave them with their mouths dropped open because they're like, how on earth? But it's just something that you build up to learning how to do like everything else. You, you start with your little 14 count or 11 count when you're young and then you start practicing and doing higher counts uh, or is it smaller counts and you just get into the groove of it so I don't have a problem stitching on 20 account but I do need my lighting I do need to be fairly close to the canvas I also need to not do cross country because this, the, the gaps that are left behind I tried a little bit in one of the squares and the gaps that are left behind are so 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 tiny you could just not find them um, especially if the stitches are all around it. So if you've got one stitch in the center and stitches done all around it, you kind of have to squint to see where it, where that little gap is. And I don't think I'd like that on the whole, the whole canvas. So for me, this one is all gonna be either blocks or diagonals or something to that effect, working row by row, because I just don't think that I can do this, you know, sort of, cross country all over the place I just think I'd lose my mind with all the teeny weeny tiny little gaps that were all buried in there somewhere so I'm yeah I'm looking forward to, to this one and I'll just give you a quick um, let me find my glasses now because uh, all week I've been having to put my glasses on and off and on and off let's see so I'll tell you exactly how much I've got done on this one. I've got a really big tablet, by the way. My husband said, why do you want such a big tablet? And I'll tell you why. Because I put my pattern keeper on and then I put um, a little small screen of floss tube or something else on the same, you know, on the same screen. So I can see what I'm stitching above 
and then underneath I've got my videos playing so I can look at it to watch TV to watch Netflix or whatever and I can also mark off at the same time it's fantastic <laughs> it really is okay so I'm on to pattern keeper and this one is once upon a fairy tale and I am at 0.93% I have done a total of 4248 stitches go me since September so I'm almost almost at the end of a page I don't know if see I can't even hold this this thing because it's so big so the oh you're not going to see anything with this ring light so the page comes down another four another four squares so I'm halfway down I'd say halfway down the page just over halfway down and this one has a total of 455,000 stitches and I didn't really think about that when I started it I didn't really process how many stitches that actually was because maybe my brain maybe my like brain just didn't want to process it just wanted to look kind of overlook it <laughs> but i've had this chart for ages and i've been wanting to start it i wanted to start it last year but i didn't because i had other things going on and then because i finished home for the holidays i started um happy village and i've since cropped happy village as i'm only going to do half of the chart Happy Village is going to be more prominent next year, I think. Um, so I thought, you know what? You only live once. I'm not one for starting things that frequently. So yeah. I've just realised that life is too short. So the next one I want to quickly show you that I've been working on and is probably going to remain in my um, rotation until the end of the year is the sewing lady and this is by Delphine Enrolhas I think is the name kind of a little bit uh, Italian or Spanish sounding and this is not available in Haid any longer because it was just a freebie given out to us when we joined the Heaven Earth Designs Stitch Along so you can get it on Golden Kite I think it's quite expensive but you can find it there and I cropped a whole section off the top because it looked like it wasn't the chart wasn't going to lose much by cropping off a section of the top I did however leave an ample amount of fabric around so that if I wanted to do that extra cropping the extra part I decided not to do if I want to do that when I'm finished and add it on, I can still do it. I'll still have enough fabric. So for this one, I am sort of working diagonally. I was working to the end. I reached the end and then I decided to come back to here. So I'm now working in diagonals. To me, it looks very, very dark. It looks darker than the mock-up. So I'm hoping at some point, when the woman kicks in and all the information, all the better details down here. I'm really hoping that's going to make up for it because I don't I don't really know if I like such a massively dark chart. But then we'll just have to trust the process and see because I really like the design. So I, I do want to keep going with it. But I, I just fingers crossed that there's going to be a bit more colour. It's not going to be a bit as dreary. I, I thought this would be a bit brighter, but it isn't. I'm just I'm not going to just quit because I really like it and I enjoy stitching on it so I'm going to keep going um but I think once I get to the woman there's no point in stopping is there I'll just have to finish this finish the, the chart <laughs> so yeah this is a 25 count by the way this is not the 28 this is 25 did I say that I worked the other one one over one if I didn't tell you that the once upon a fairy tale I'm working one over one full cross which I find quite enjoyable actually. I used to not like full crosses until I realized that if you use the right needle and one that isn't gonna scrape against the fabric or be too thick to get in between stitches, when you get the right needle for you and it can be a bit of a trying to uh, trial to test out different needles, then it actually makes the process so much more enjoyable. Sometimes I used to just pick up a needle and go and think I'm not enjoying this why am I not enjoying this it never occurred to me that the needle I'm using is terrible and that I should have tried a few but now I do that I try a few needles every time I start a project 
But I know now when I'm using the even weave on 25, which has these lines, I know that I will in, like the 28 size needle or 26, which is quite small. So let me tell you the stats on this one, the sewing lady. Um, she is a lot further than I thought I'd have got to at this time of the year. She is at 11.94%. Now that doesn't mean that I've stitched all that. Part of that is what I had cropped off and filled in. I've marked it all off on Pattern Keeper because I want a true representation of how much I've got left to do. So 11.94%, which includes the cropped area that I've marked off, is where I'm at. So it's not bad. So it's a total of 40,900 stitches, which obviously I haven't done 40,900 stitches because I've marked off the ones that I'm not going to do. And that's where we're at with the sewing lady. So that one's really coming along great. There's only one more to show you that I've worked on. I did actually include my sad fairy into the rotation, but she hasn't had a look in yet. I'm hoping I can get to her before the end of the year because I've got this thing of I just really want to make progress on her, but I kind of want to pick her out and do like a whole month of just her. And nothing else so she's kind of gone back into the waiting list I'm wondering if I should just leave her again until next year and then just pick a month and do an entire month or two of sad fairy and I might actually get up to about 60% or 70% we'll see I don't know I'm kind of enjoying these two at the moment and I'm also trying really hard to get the fourth page that's what this brings me to the fourth page of the heaven and earth design cell which has taken priority over everything. And I really, really put a lot of work into it. By that, I mean, I've literally brought it out every every other day and done a few hundred. One night I did 800 stitches on it and I got really far. So I'm now on, I've got to 49% up to, why am I trying to read without my glasses? 29,500 stitches on my astrology cat and yeah that one that page page number four is very nearly finished now so here we go that's where I'm at so as you can see I'm not doing a lot of rows or anything because I want to get this done by the end of the year I'm doing and because there's little blocks of colours everywhere, that's what I'm doing. Little blocks of colours, sometimes going colour by colour. I filled in everything down on that pipe, whatever you call it, that stick. Did the other bauble. There's a lot down there, so I'm really, really, really close. I think less than 2,000 stitches left, thereabouts, to finish this fourth page. So I'm on track, guys, to finish this fourth page, which... I'm really pleased about I've seen some people have finished the whole lot and I'm like a little teeny weeny bit jealous of that <laughs> but I just I still think they've done great I've been watching um, Stitch With Me's by Jade 310 Stitcher and she's working the I think it's Merry Mushroom Village 2 which is the big red mushroom it's um, <clears throat> a crop from an Amy Stewart design and she's almost she's so close to finishing so well done jade you've done a fantastic job honestly and that chart that you're doing is was one of my favorites when we had to pick pick out of the 10 charts that were available i really loved that red mushroom so i'm hoping well i'm not hoping i will get all of the remaining charts at the end of this year and one day i'm going to do that red mushroom I loved the two mushrooms actually so I don't know it was so hard because I liked about four or five of them maybe there was about four that I really really couldn't decide on and I ended up going with astrology cat but then halfway through astrology cat I was thinking oh my god I wish I'd chosen this one or that one but you know what I think it it would have been the same halfway through the chart I would still have been struggling no matter what the chart was because I think that's just what you do when you pick up a stitch along it doesn't matter how fantastic it is when it's a stitch along there's some little taboo about it 
that makes you struggle <laughs> anyway this is as far as I've got I'm really proud that I got this much done I've got my first three pages along the top so I'm going forward to finishing that page and I will do it no matter what so I'm not too disappointed I didn't finish the whole thing it would have been rare for me to do that because there's always something going on and I find it difficult to get you know to get focused on things it takes me a while to get into them sometimes and um, I also don't like to spend too long on stitching one thing that's the thing I'm I'm just so unbalanced with it I want to see a lot of progress on the one thing but I don't like to spend more than a couple of days on a chart so that really clashes that does because if I was happy to spend like two weeks on one chart and not be thinking not be listening to the other ones calling me everything would be fine but I like to get lots of progress but I also like to switch them out which doesn't really work that doesn't work together so I do hear them calling me and it just drives me nuts and I think oh I've got to go back and pick up this one oh, I've got to go back and pick up this one and it's just a never-ending cacophony of charts calling me but hey I think that's just what happens so that is all my stitching that I've got done recently I think going forward unless I change my mind dramatically which I don't think is going to happen um, but never say never I will continue with this until the end I may continue with the other two and maybe what we're coming into we're coming into the end of October beginning of November I'm just I'm going to think about it again in November that's what I'm going to do I'm going to think about it all again and see if I want to whip down even more which means if I can get this finished by November possibly I can possibly then that means I can put this one away for a while um, maybe I can do a spinner wheel on the other ones why not I don't know what it is about spinner wheel I I used to get disappointed every time I sp spun the wheel and it would land on something I'd be like oh but that would happen with everything it landed on so <laughs> <laughs> I honestly couldn't be more difficult when it came to choosing what I'm stitching on but I'll think about it because I'm also watching um, gaming cra crafty gaming Jamie I think it is I'll put a link again on her um, video below she's another fantastic floss tuber and I love listening to her um, she, she likes to do a lot of sort of choosing which whips and spinning wheels and she, she does a spreadsheet with all her whips and she wants to see how many she can get done she's really trying hard to get some finishes and I sometimes think oh I want to do that I want to do that but I just don't do it I just end up just sticking to the same couple of whips that I've got and then maybe switch them out in a couple of months something like that I don't know but she's anyway she does a great job with her um, rotations she doesn't always get the um, the goals met but she's kind of happy with that which is great if I don't get my goals met I go and get depressed <laughs> so yeah oh I have to sit a little bit better okay so that's enough squabbling about those three charts my other charts that I'm working on are A Christmas Carol by Dean Morrissey I started that one at the beginning of the year I just got a crazy day and started it I really love it I will get back to it and do it my Riverwalk charm is on timeout at the moment because I spent so much time on Riverwalk charm in the last couple of years. I got to 50%. I started it at the end, at the beginning of 2020. So I've only had it for four years and I'm at 50%. And it is a large chart. Um, so the other 50% is going to be another gradual process. And I think that's it. There are a few other charts that I'd like to get back to some of them were completely ufo'd sometimes people ask me oh where is this one and where is that one well some of them are just never coming back because i just i didn't like the fabric or i didn't enjoy stitching them i can't remember the whole reasons for it some of them are just ufo'd and other ones i know in my mind that i do want to get back to because they're in my cupboard and eventually i'll get to them like tree of life there's a tree of life which I started. I can't for the life of me remember the uh, the name of the artist, but I can give you a link to it. And I uh, did about 20% on that one, and I did put it away. And I think I will like maybe I'd like to get that one out again someday. 
Also, I started Paris Romance, which is an artisy design. And again, I'd like to get back to that one someday. So there are charts, there are whips that I have that I know I want to get back to someday. And when I say someday, I'm not even going to put a specific date, just some point in the future. And I think that's it for the whips. I'd like to come back and give you an update progress again in a couple of weeks and let you know how I'm getting on with my... Let's see if I can finish my um, Haid Sal. That would be great. And the other two, I'm sort of working alternatively. And the last thing I want to mention is I want to say a huge, big, massive thank you to those of you that bought needle minds from me. I opened my shop... Um, about a month ago and it just skyrocketed with sales I just only expected one or two <laughs> and I was really on the ball with making these things because as soon as I was putting them up they were getting booked they were getting purchased which is fantastic I'm not complaining about it did kind of take a little bit of stitchy time away but I'm not complaining about it and so I just wanted to say a huge thank you to those of you who went in and liked some of them and purchased some of them and I obviously I didn't last week um, I left my shop open but I didn't process anything until I returned um, so there's always some new ones going to go up some of them which I have painted myself and created and some of them which are sort of crafted with decoupage that I have so many beautiful decoupage um, pieces of art that I have and I craft them myself and turn them into me needle minders and others I um, paint myself. Here's a recent one which I painted myself. This is called Traffic Sheep. I'll put a picture up if it's not too, if it's not focusing. Just something that came to my head and I thought how cute is that? So that is an actual drawing which I print and make into a needle minder. Other ones which I've made out of my decoupage, these are now available white swan you can see how wonderfully that sparkles there's a magnet on the back with a beautiful glass backing so it's like a glass dome and these all have a variety of colors and decorations these are available now in my shops if you want to take a look and there's many many more as well there's a beautiful one with roses and then we have very quickly beautiful sparkly blue candle we also have some of these have got gemstones inside this one has beautiful gemstone just placed in there which is covered up so depending that's some like elegant soft vintage style shoes and it's sparkly depending which way you turn it they are quite big so they're great if you've got lots of needles or if you just want a nice sturdy one and they're very strong like really very strong and beautiful little clock so these are the newest ones that have gone up there's loads just go and take a look because they are unique so I just want to say thank you to you lovely lovely ladies that have bought one I will be doing customized ones soon once I've get, got my mojo together so big great big thank you to you all and I think that's it for this episode. It's not going to be the longest, but I think it's nice. Sometimes it doesn't have to be long. You just want to come in, say what you need to say, and then be done. So that's where I'm at. And if you've got any questions, please send me a message. My email address is also down below. Oh, time out now, guys. I'm going to go and chill, <laughs> make a cup of tea. Um, what day are we today? Today is... Tuesday I believe I can't even tell when you go traveling it's so difficult to keep track of time and days and yeah so it's Tuesday I wish you a wonderful rest of the week I hope you enjoy your stitching let me know what your stitching plans are I always love to know what people's stitching plans are quickly also want to mention another floss tuber that I've been watching 50 needles she's fantastic she's from Estonia and I'm not sure if she actually uses 50 needles on a project, but she does use a few. And she's also got a stitch with me, which I watched yesterday. She's working on a beautiful, colourful owl. Go and check her out because she's got some fantastic finishes. My eyes nearly popped out of my head when I saw her beautiful finishes. I was so jealous because <laughs> they are so beautiful. So well done. And I've also been following 
Siska Stitches. She's another stitcher here on Floss Tube. Um, she's got amazing whips. She loves bringing out some fantastic games. If you like the gaming side of stitching, go check her out. Oh my goodness, I think there's others I've been watching. Catherine, Catherine Stitches. She's another lovely lady from Northern Ireland. I've never been to Northern Ireland, but I do go to the south. Um, and she's got, again, some wonderful, wonderful projects that she started working on. I'm sure there are others, and I'll get round to mentioning them in time. I'm just not very good at remembering all the details. So anyway, folks, take care. Have a lovely rest of the week, and I will see you again. Bye for now.